on the verge of the precipice. In the image of the United National Congress, the Member of Parliament for Kuva South, Mr. Rudy Indarsi. Political Leader of the United National Congress, the Honorable Kamla Pasad Bisesa, and uh, all of my colleagues uh, on this virtual platform here tonight, uh, and uh, my brothers and sisters of our great party, a pleasant good night to each and every one of you. Tonight, Trinidad and Tobago is in a state of distraught and chaos as a republic and as our nation grapples with some of the largest crises ever in our nation's history, like the emergence of the COVID-19, others have appeared on our doorsteps unannounced. Other crises, such as the collapse of the Police Service Commission, appeared as a result of alleged political interference by the Prime Minister, who seems to tinker with the integrity of every state institution to appease his political ego. Every single independent institution in Trinidad and Tobago is under threat. We are at a stage when rising COVID statistics have soared to over 500 cases per day and deaths of unimaginable proportion in recent times. This situation, which existed before the lifting of the state of emergency, will lamentably persist or become even worse, with no indication that our police or healthcare agencies are prepared to deal with any sudden spikes in relation to infection. At the middle of these crises stands the PNM government led by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, which has burdened this country with crisis after crisis, for which they always seek to blame someone else, pointing fingers one way while running the other way to make their escape. My brothers and sisters, terror has become soon as the lifting of the state of emergency has brought with it an increase in criminal activity. And over the past week, we have seen headlines where, which detail multiple killings in one day overnight. And uh, over the weekend, we have seen what has transpired. This, the cause of this spike is unsure. But what is sure is the PNM government, led by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, has not been able to make the people of this country feel any safer, especially given his interference into the affairs of the Police Service Commission and its subsequent collapse, and more so its indirect responses, his indirect responses, sorry, on whether he influenced or caused the now infamous withdrawal of the merit list. In addition to all of these matters that have seen this government cause the collapse of public goodwill and state integrity in this country, we now have a new crisis which has emerged at one of our very key institutions, that being the industrial court. And the industrial court is, an critical, is a critical institution in the context of the preservation of harmonious industrial relations environment in Trinidad and Tobago, and in the context of the pre preservation of law and order. And it maintains justice and matters between employers and employees and it has often set the precedent for how the interests of workers and businesses are to be observed in Trinidad and Tobago. And the industrial court, my brothers and sisters, is key because it is important when it comes to keeping a check and balance on the state, when it 
comes to the political agendas and mismanagement of the state and its impact on workers in Trinidad and Tobago. And it is of grave concern that I have read uh, over the last weekend reports concerning possible nepotism in the hiring of personnel at the industrial court. And today, the United National Congress, led by Kamala Pasad Bissessa, will continue to prosecute the possible nepotism in the hiring of uh, the new registrar at the industrial court. And today, we are forced to ask the question, who is the high official responsible for gifting attorney at law, Kevon Swan, the prestigious position of the, of the registrar of the industrial court? And furthermore, I have in my possession a series of WhatsApp messages between two persons, one whom is supposed to be an employee of the court, while the other is seeking employment of the, at the court. And at some point in time, the name Iva is mentioned. One wonders who is this Iva that has been mentioned. Apparently, I ask, was this Iva instrumental in creating an opportunity for one person in the WhatsApp team to receive employment, supposedly even though he was not as well qualified as others uh, who may have applied for this said position, position. And my brothers and sisters, I want to take the opportunity here to read the thread of WhatsApp messages that was sent to me and that I have in my possession. And it reads as follows. Congrats are in order. Well done, sir. I see persistence did pay off. Yes, Ivor is a gem. He always keeps his promises and is trustworthy. I am excited to commence this new chapter in my life, thanks to him. Being registrar is no easy task, but he has faith in me, and I refuse to let him down. There will be a lot to learn at the industrial court with all those unions and their cases. I am really happy for you. Try and link your BFF, please. You know, I am an experience in legal affairs. Would you need an assistant or clerk? I can ask Ivor if he needs anyone at the court. Knowing him, Ivor will make room or he can squeeze you in. But he has to be careful. Too many eyes at the court, at the hall, sorry which was why he organized for me to be at the industrial court. Imagine that register Kivon Swan. There is a beautiful ring to it. When do you start? And I hope to get you get I hope to get you your office. And uh, the series of messages continues to to go with the continued interaction and the offer of lunch and so on. And Trinidad and Tobago, the UNC has to be focused because we will continue to ask, my friends, who is this Ivor? How did he help to get a job for this said person? How many other applicants were they applying for this said position? And why are people being allowed to pull strings in the industrial court to hire persons who are not well qualified for positions as others may be? Again, who is this Ivor? And can anyone guess? Maybe, my friends, we cannot continue to have or afford critical institutions which will be compromised. Because at the end of the day, I have been advised by workers at the industrial court that they fear victimization. 
They claim that the position was not advertised internally at the court as was past practice. And since December of 2020, this position remained vacant when the former registrar Noel Innes retired. Workers have indicated to me that the position was not advertised by the Service Commission Department. They felt that the assistant registrar, Katian Alexander Fraser, who have acted on numerous occasions based on the, when the former registrar left the country, was on vacation or out of the jurisdiction, as I said, she should have been considered for the job. And today, my research has guided me to ask the questions, did the Judicial Legal Services Commission, did it give a directive to the Service Commission Department to create an advertisement for this said vacancy? And based on procedure, that advertisement would have been placed on the Commission's website and it would have been forwarded and circulated within the industrial court for internal applications. Workers have further guided me to ask the question that the effect of denying others to apply and to be interviewed and considered is a serious breach and did the judicial and legal service commissioners did the members of this commission, did they breach their responsibility to ensure there was equality of treatment for all who wanted to apply for this said job, my brothers and sisters? So tonight, we are forced to ask the questions on behalf of those who do not have a voice, who do not um, or cannot access equality of treatment and opportunity for all. Was the process for this job, did the service commission department ensure that there was ad an advertisement? Did the judicial and legal service commission advise the service commission department that the advertisement should have been placed? And if the advertisement was made, when was it placed? my dear brothers and sisters. The job of the registrar is no easy task, and this is why we are insisting that this office be free from any kind of political interference, maneuvering, or based on relationships that persons have or are alleged to have had with office holders. As I said, I do not know the thread of WhatsApp messages that I have in my possession, if it is indeed true, and those who are charged with the responsibilities, I expect them to clear the air for the benefit of all in the interest of transparency and good governance. And this leads me to the very important issue as it relates to the fragrant disregard for a recent ruling of the industrial court of Trinidad and Tobago as it applies to the North Central Regional Health Authority. A senior manager at the North Central Regional Health Authority was on suspension for the last two plus years. This in itself was an abuse to have an, an employee on suspension pending investigation for two years is a breach of all the labor laws and all industrial relations practices in this country from a good point of view or what is established as good industrial relations practices. And based on a matter that was pursued by this worker, he was to be reinstated to his substantive position. And tonight I ask, why did the board of directors of the North Central Regional Health Authority and its, com its CEO, one Davlin Thomas, fragrantly disregarded the rule of law 
and displayed contempt and no respect for the ruling that was handed down by the judges at the industrial court. And uh, tonight, the Minister of Health, Terence Dial Singh, must tell the population whether he was aware of the ruling of the industrial court and whether he instructed the board of directors of the North Central Regional Health Authority and the PNM's favored son, Davlin Thomas, to breach this ruling. And uh, tonight I call upon Davlin Thomas not to use taxpayers' money, but to use his personal money, the $20,000 fine and the $10,000 award for damages that was made in relation to the abuse of this ruling to come to be paid out of his personal earnings and not taxpayers' money. And indeed, Terence D. L. Singh must tell the country why he, as the minister with line responsibility for the North Central Regional Health Authority, allowed this brute breach, allowed the flagrant disregard for the rule of law. And that is why workers have to be afraid for Keith Rowley as prime minister. They have to be afraid for the cabinet of this PNM-led government because they have no regard for the workers of Trinidad and Tobago. They have no regard for established independent institutions. And tonight, I want to tell you that they reward failure, they reward incompetence by promoting and protecting their favored ones as it relates to incompetence and the crises that we are facing. The latest health statistics in Trinidad and Tobago from a Ministry of Health point of view has indicated, has indicated that the deadliest day of the pandemic uh, was last Saturday with a record of 28 deaths. And in addition to that, we have seen 1,967 deaths. And in addition to that, 271 persons have died for the month of November. 97 deaths have occurred within the last week. My brothers and sisters, our healthcare system is in a state of collapse. But the CEO, of the North Central Regional Health Authority, Davlin Thomas, is protected by the Prime Minister and the Minister of Health. And the Principal Medical Officer, the latest addition to incompetence, is now promoted with uh, rewards after rewards, my brothers and sisters. And we must ask ourselves the question, how come the Principal Medical Officer has now moved from being just that po occupying that position, and she is now a favored daughter of uh, Keith Rowley and the PNM cabinet. She's now a director at the Eastern Regional Health Authority. She is a director at uh, NIPDEC. She is a director at Angostura Holdings. And in addition to that, my brothers and sisters, uh, the crisis in our healthcare system, we are not seeing no ease. And tonight, I want to ask Miriam, Dr. Miriam Abdul Richards, is she conflicted as a public servant in terms of the Civil Service Regulation 137? And how will she conduct her role and function in a very independent manner. And in addition to that, where will she find the time to dedicate to this fight against our COVID-19 pandemic whilst occupying the, these board positions? And in addition to that, is she conflicted in the, from the position of her responsibility to the health and well-being of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago at a time also serving on a board that is engaged in the production and sale of alcohol. 
and in addition to that, has she violated civil service regulation 137? The ball is in your court tonight, Dr. Richard. Answer these questions for the benefit of the citizenry of Trinidad and Tobago and the taxpaying citizens of the country who are crying out for decent health care under a failed government and under the system that has failed the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So tonight, my brothers and sisters, the United National Congress, led by Kamala Pasad Bisesa, is on the move. We are ensuring that we, in, we uphold the Constitution, the independence of our public institutions, the rule of law. We guarantee you that we will not allow democracy to die in Trinidad and Tobago. And you must join us in our glorious struggles throughout the length and breadth of Trinidad and Tobago to ensure that there is transparency, there is good governance, and uh, there is a political party that can return you to the glory days that you enjoyed in this country between 2010 and 2015 under the leadership of Kamala Pasad Bisesa, the United National Congress has had the track record of delivery and service to you. And that is why we tell you tonight, there is hope under the UNC, there is hope under Kamala Pasad Bisesa as we continue our glorious struggle to return Trinidad and Tobago to a country of hope 